Shalom Israel, it's, it's going, going down. 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 down It's that time again, come join us at the 49th Annual Passover Shalom Israel, my name is Officer Nazi of Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge Started on 1 West 125th Street and all of New York under command of Juliana If you heard the rumors, the rumors are absolutely true man you understand? We're going to be having the 49th annual Passover in Yonkers, New York. You understand? Under Commander General Yohanna, hosted by Commander General Yohanna of the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. It's going to be on 2nd Hudson Street at the Grand Roosevelt Ballroom. You, might, you most definitely should be there if you're from the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians only. You understand? Make sure you be there, man. If you're in the South, if you're in the Caribbean, if you're in South America, wherever the hell you are on this earth, man, if you're Black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, you should be at the Lord's Passover, which is the only Passover authorized on this earth, you understand, by the Lord, which is going to take place at Yonkers, in Yonkers, New York, at 2nd Hudson Street. You understand? At the Grand... Uh, the Grand Roosevelt Ballroom. Make sure you be there, man. You understand? We'll be turned up in there, man. Make sure you be there, man. Come on, March 30th at Man, these white people, man, let's talk about that school shooting that happened down there in Florida. Since yeah, you want to be right? talking about all this. How you endangering our kids in our schools? Right. How, your, how your children endangering our kids? Right. You understand? Let's talk about that. You want to talk about some, let's, let's, let's sit down and talk. Let's have a drink. You may poison us back here. I don't want to drink with you. Right. You understand? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about Donald Trump. You understand? How they how America? It, it ain't even the United States of America no more. It's the divided States of America. Right, right, right. You don't divide. It ain't no United in America no more. Who you fooling? Why won't they start racially profiling white kids for shooting up schools? Right, right, Let's right. talk about that. Right. Why won't they start like they racially profiled us with, with drugs and everything else? Why don't you start racially profiling white kids? Right. You don't want to talk about that though. You want to talk about how we all won. Worst thing we could ever do is integrate with these people. Right. Now our kids in danger because they kids have a bad day. 17 kids got killed down there in Florida. 17 for a white kid will, will make America great again happen. That's right. What you want to talk about? You think we in a post-racial era? You black people better wake up, man. The white man, let me tell you something. And it ain't, you, if you think he the only one, if you think that white boy is the only one, you sadly mistaken. Right, There's right. tons of them white boys with AR-15. Let me tell you something else. And they don't need AR-15 to do their stuff. They got bombs. The Amazon shipping them a bomb halfway, halfway from China. No, they right. getting the bomb halfway. Right. Build them, getting ammonium nitrate, building the bomb. These white boys study, they terrorists, man. Right. They are the terrorists. You understand? They just busted a, a white girl, a white girl, 18-year-old white girl in Maryland. She wrote a journal on how she was going to carry out a school a school terrorism, a terrorist attack. Right. Her father had to turn her in. I think it was time we start racially profiling white people in the yeah, America. Right, right, be safe. Right. You understand? Because you know what? If that was a Mexican, you would have said it's the immigration problem. That's right, right, right. If that was an Arab that did that shooting, you would have said it's terrorism. Right. If that was a black man that did that shooting, you would have said he's a thug, he's a, he's a murderer, he's an outcast. But because it was a white child that did the shooting, he's just a child, he's just a kid, he didn't need any more love, the hell with that. Right. You understand? We better fight to get our own schools, fight to get our own businesses, right. and, and, and for sure, we showing you where your God is at in this right. Bible. Right. You understand? So what the brother is saying is right. These white people, let me tell you something, don't be fooled by them coming up here, they trying to act nice. We see, we see it from a mile away. Right. The only, the only way we go, the only way we go, conversation we gonna have is them bowing down before us and kissing our boots That's it. and putting money in that bucket right. and write the check. That's it. I, let me say, I don't need no dream no more. We time out for all this. I have a dream. Right. I have a dream. Let me tell you something. Fifty years later, we still trying to have a dream. That's right. I call that being in a coma. Right. If you sleep for 50 years, that's a coma. Right. We done left our kids a dream. Them civil rights Negroes is dying out right now. 
Right. John Lewis gonna probably kick the bucket. You know how he gonna kick the bucket any day, especially right. uh, 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 Jesse Jackson. Right. Them Negroes is done. Right. They getting ready to die, and you gonna leave your kids to goddamn dreams. Well, we should have left our kids a reality. All right. All right. They should have left us a reality, but they left us a dream. Yeah. We don't have nothing tangible. Finally left this goddamn white man. Let him have America. It's gonna burn anyway. That's right. That's right. The Lord gonna burn America. Let me tell you something, white man, he got enemies. He know you got enemies. And that's why he gotta stay, keep his neck, his foot on you. Give me that scripture where it said that they multiplied in the land in Egypt. And uh, let's, let's deal with the wise. Let me show you about the white man. I'm gonna give it back to you, Malak Wise. Cause you touched it on a heavy point. The white man, let me tell you why he wanna deport so many of our Latino brothers out of out the country. Why he, why he oppressing our Puerto Rican brothers. Why he oppressing our, 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 our uh, Mexican brothers. Our brothers from the Caribbean. Why he called Haiti a shithole. Let me tell you why. You understand? Because like, we ain't forgot about that. That's we ain't right. forgot about how you disrespected the child of Levi. Right. We ain't forgot about that. Right. You understand? You got like that scripture, brother? Give me that scripture. Exodus chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. Just give me your two verses. Come out of my con. Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Uh-huh. Now, there arose up a new king over Egypt. Now, this is, everybody know, the only reason Egypt became great because of a Puerto Rican brother by the name of Joseph. That's right. That's right. Joseph was a Puerto Rican That's brother. Right. He would be a Puerto Rican brother today. Right. He interpreted the dreams that kept Egypt from going bankrupt. So now there's a new so-called president or a king and what he's doing, he don't care about Joseph no more. He don't care about how, how Egypt became great. Right? Read on. Which knew Joseph, which knew not Joseph. Meaning he didn't, he didn't care about, he didn't consider what Joseph did for Egypt. Read on. Or Israelite, read on. Verse 9. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. They are what? more and mightier than we. White people start to realize that these Hispanics and all these other people, the, the Israelites, these people on this side, they starting to multiply. Right. America starting to not look white. That's right. It's it starting to look like I'm in a foreign country. That's how the white man feel. He feel like he in a foreign country because there's more Hispanics and more Mexicans and more blacks and, it's, and Hispanic and Latino brothers. He looking at it like he losing America. Right. The right. same thing in Egypt. Read on. Verse 10, come on, let us deal wisely with them. Now listen to this, let us deal what? Let us deal wisely with them. The Bible says, Pharaoh said, let us deal wisely with them. Right. Right. Not openly, but wisely. Let's, let's, let, let's, let's put some kind of plan together to, to cut down their numbers. Listen what the Bible said, because what, what we're reading here, this future right now, this past, present, and future was happening right now in America. We don't. Least they multiply and follow out of any war. I feel like it. Least they multiply and it come to pass that when they're followed out of any war. And the Bible says this, when they start to multiply, if there's a war happen, read on, they join. It's like it. They join also unto our enemy. That's what the white white man is afraid of in America. Donald right. Trump know that he at war, he getting ready to go to World War Three. And he know he got to say, we got to keep the blacks and Hispanics. We got to get a lot of them out the country. We got to oppress them because if we don't, they may join our enemies. They may join North Korea. They may join the world. Who knows? They may join any, any of our adversaries. That's how he look at it because he know he got enemies. And he know that he been oppressing us. So he know in the back of his mind, he said, let me tell you something. I gotta say this, I, I know a lot of people don't understand this. But black people in America, black, Hispanic, and Native American Indian people, you are more of a threat to the white man than any Arab. I gotta keep it real. Like, think about this. The white man is at war with Arabs right now in, in the Middle East. You don't see a car full of abs getting shot up, do you? By right, a police officer. Right, right. The white man is in a trade war with China right now. Donald Trump is in a trade war with China. But guess what? There's a Chinatown in every major city in America. Right. Where the Chinese hide their own, they put their own writing on the wall, right. and nobody says nothing. You know why? Because the white man respects them. Right, right. Because they have unity. What you call racism. Right. You understand? What you call racism, we call unity. Right. Read on. 
and fight against us. Uh -huh. And so get them up out of the land. Say what? Get them up out of the land. They are illegal immigrants. Deport them. Get them out the land. Now these people were born in the land. They were born in Egypt. But to Pharaoh, that didn't mean nothing. He said, get them out the land. Because there's too many of them. They starting to multiply. We don't. Verse 11. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them. See that? They set over taskmasters. These white super, these supervisors, some of them Uncle Tom's too, that keep you in line. They set over taskmasters to keep you, to keep you, keep this city going. America's like a machine that grinds us into power. Like a machine that keep the buses going, that keep the lights on. It grinds our people into powder. You understand? They set over taskmasters. You know, to afflict them. To do what? To afflict them uh -huh. with their burden. With their what? With their burden. Go ahead. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. The Bible says the Israelites built unto Pharaoh treasure cities. New Orleans is a treasure city. That's right. Where they had Mardi Gras already. Right. New York City is a treasure city. That's right. Los Angeles, California is a treasure city. That's right, right. These major cities, they were built off of the backs of our people. Right, That's right. right. And everyone knows that. They know history. Right. You understand? They built unto Pharaoh treasure cities, the Bible says. Read on. Python and Ramses. Uh -huh. These were treasure cities. Go ahead. Verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Right. You see that? But that's the thing about God's chosen people. The more you afflict us, the more we starting to multiply and still grow. Right. They pushed abortion on us, Planned Parenthood. But I, you know what I'm happy about? I'm happy to see a sister with two or three kids. That's right. Right. I'm happy to see that. We don't work on getting the man in the house, but I'm happy to see that you having our babies. Right. You understand? The white man has pushed these, this is genocide one-on-one -on -one he pushed on us. With the homosexuality, which is population control, and the Planned Parenthood. That's right. You understand? Especially our Puerto Rican brothers, man, and sisters, man. They having lots of kids. I love it. Because guess what? Let me tell you something. You and me, any woman out there that's thinking about aborting her, her kids, man, that you black, Hispanic, or Native American Indian, you better not abort your child. That's right. Because I'm going to tell you something. Moses came out of this. You understand? Moses came out of this. You don't know who the Lord could be sitting back in the earth to help our people. Right. You don't know these some of these kids, they bad, I know they bad, but they special. That's you don't right. know what the Lord's gonna use some of our sons and daughters for. That's so you right. better not kill that child. Right. You better have that baby. And if you can't, if you don't know how to how to raise that child, get in contact with us. Right. We'll help you raise that child. Right. You understand? Any more of that, brother? Yeah. Right. Right. And they grieve because of the children of Israel. They what? They grieved because of the children of Israel. Verse 13, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to be served with rigor. With rigor, this is oppression. Right, right. You wanna know, let me tell you something, you wanna know why so many black people on drugs? It ain't just our choice. Right. Let me tell you something. Anybody that studied poverty know wherever there's a high rate of poverty, there's a high rate of crime. Right, right, right. You look at the Italians. When the Italians came to America, they were in poverty. What happened? What came out of that? The mafia. Right. They came, they, they, they created a criminal underworld to survive. Right. Right or wrong. Same thing with the Chinese. They created the triad. Don't let nobody fool you. Let the white man fool you and talking about that, that we all criminals. Let me tell you something. America is the way it is because the white man created it that way. Right. It's all around with the gun violence, all that. This, this world, you created this world. We didn't create this world. Right. Your people created this world. If there's a problem with this society, it's your people's fault. Right, right. You had us enslaved for over 400 years. You killed the Taino Indians, the, the, uh, the Taino Indians in Puerto Rico. You exploited them, the Iraq Indians, which were, which were a royal, a royal people, right. an advanced civilization with the Maya, the Inca, and all those other civilizations right. that you right. damn near exterminated. If it was for our women having kids, you understand? And if a, white, if a white person out here is sorry for that, you can step forward. We can talk about this. We can tell you what you can do. What you can do up here to show that you're sorry. But until then, we're going to continue on with the lesson. Let me get a little bit more, brother. Go ahead. Another one con. Exodus chapter 1, verse 14. And they made their lives bitter. And they made our lives what? 
bitter, we're hard bonded. Hard, they call it a job, but let me tell you something, when we working ain't really a job, it's slavery. That's right. Because you gotta work two or three jobs. We just saw a young brother, a young 12 year old, a young 12 year old walk by here, rolling up a blunt, a child. And you know his mother and his mother probably has cleaning one of these shops up in here, or cooking food. She can't even raise her child. Couldn't even raise her. Because guess what? We trying to survive in this place. Right. You understand? White people living good, but we trying to survive. Right. You know I'm telling the truth, brother. We trying to survive. This ain't life. You right. understand? Like it work you to death when you got a job. Right. You understand? Right. Some of these took the work in two or three jobs. Come out of Popeye's, go over here to do this. Go over to somewhere to do that. We say, let me tell you something. Let me tell you like this. The white man is cheating a lot of our sisters out of income and a lot of our brothers out of income too. I see a sister at Burger King carrying out four goddamn jobs at one time. That's right. She had the headphone set on. She was taking the drive through order. She was making the fries. At the same time asking what you want at the front counter. At the same time doing it, uh, cashing the money. It's like damn. That's four payrolls. Right. That's for that four uh, occupations in one. Right. Anybody else doing that? That's oppression, black man. And the white man know it. Right. He said we cutting back on the job. So you're doing two or three jobs now, but your pay don't increase. Right. Your pay stay the same. Right. These people are the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. You understand? Devil means deceiver. That's what that means. He's a deceiver. Read on. Give me some more. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage uh -huh. and mortar and in brick. Or meaning construction. That's how they built these treasure cities. We we were we were shepherds. We we tended to our flock. Right. They 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 changed our occupation and say, you know what, you're gonna be you gonna be you're gonna be bricklayers now. We're gonna do this. And they put us, that's why they let me tell you something, they call Egypt the furnace. They what do they call America? The melting pot. Oh. It's the that's same right. thing, you in Egypt all over again. Right. Look at that dollar, look at that dollar bill, you're gonna see that pyramid on that dollar bill. This right. Egypt this Egypt all over again. Right. The Bible said that we disobeyed God, he was gonna send us into Egypt again with ships. America is Egypt all over again. That's right. It's Babylon, it's Egypt, it's all that in the world. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. You better believe it's Sodom and Gomorrah. You wait till like 12 o'clock tonight, you're gonna know it's Sodom and Gomorrah down here. That's right. You go down Bourbon Street, you're gonna say, what in the hell is, what in the hell is this? this a man, what is this coming here this way? You ain't gonna know what it is. You ain't gonna be to identify. You understand? Read on. And in all manner of service, in the field, uh -huh. and in the field, our, our Hispanic brothers. Right. They oppressing them in the field, meaning the farming, the agriculture. Read on. All their service, wherein they made them serve was with rigor. With what? With rigor. Oh, yeah. Verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives of Salaka. The Hebrew midwives of which the name of the one was Safra, Safra, uh -huh. and the name of the other poor. So he came to the women. This is how the white man gets you. Right. He go to your woman. He came to the midwives. The midwives are the women who did, delivered the child in birth. Right. He came to them. He didn't go to the men. He went to the women and listen to what he said. Verse 16, and, and he said, when ye do the office, of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the street. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall be shall live. You see that? What does that show you? Now y'all pay attention to this. What does that show you about a man and a woman? Not saying a woman is less important, but the man is the defense of his nation. That's right. That's, right. That's why they wanted the kid destroy the male child. They want to kill our Puerto Rican brothers, kill, our, kill all our brothers on this side, try to kill all the male children, try to turn them into homosexuals. You understand? Why? Because the man is the defense. A woman can't fight for this nation. A woman, she ain't strong enough. She's not built for warfare. Right. She built for to have babies and take care of the babies and maintain the family, but she's not built for no warfare. Right. I don't know. Don't let the army, don't let the U.S. Army fool you. You go out there and think you're a you know, G.I. Jane or you the Tomb Raider. Right. You understand? 
-hmm. You see them two jugs you got on your breast, on your, your chest, that's for taking care of babies. Right. The Lord gave you that. And let me tell you something, a woman should wanna be, a woman should wanna be feminine. Right. Why, like, like the white man, he didn't flip things upside down in this place, man. That's right. The woman want to be mad. I tell him I'm a strong, independent woman. Right. I hate that. Every time I hear that, I want to throw up. Right. I'm a strong, independent. The Bible didn't make a woman strong, a strong, independent woman. The Bible called a woman a weaker vessel. Right. You understand? She not able to carry all of that. All the stuff a man can carry. A man can go through warfare. He gonna still have some scars and stuff, but he able to still kind of deal with life. Right. You understand? A woman, these women that's coming back from these war, from, from over there fighting with the white man military, they coming back destroyed as ever. Taking all kind of pills. Can't keep a man. Right. All of that. Because you so busy trying to be in charge. Right. The Lord had, the Lord had, the Pharaoh wanted to kill all the male children of Israel. But the Lord had these women resist that. Read on. Verse 17. But the midwives feared, feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them. You see that? Pharaoh wanted them to commit abortion. You can call it late term abortion, but it's abortion nonetheless. Right. Pharaoh wanted them to kill our babies. Why? So he can subdue us. He wanted the women, why? Because oh, the women, God. the woman don't carry the seed. The man carry the seed. That's right. You are what your father is. You understand? If you plant an apple seed in the ground, guess we're going to come up apples. It don't matter what land you put it in, you can put it in New Orleans and you can put it in Florida. Apples gonna come up because of the seed. The man is the is the progenitor, man. That's right. Go ahead. But save the men, children alive. Verse 13. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing? And have saved the men, children alive. So they asked Pharaoh, say, why you saved the men, children alive? Go ahead. Verse 19. And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. You heard that? For well, everybody that said we all the same. Right. The women said, we not like Egyptian women. Showing you that your woman ain't like every other woman. That's, That's right. right. You supposed to choose your woman over every other woman on the That's earth. That's right. Because no woman can match your woman. That's right. That's These right. other nations cannot match your woman. You know I'm telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? Okay, they can't match the black and Hispanic and Native American Indian the woman. They can't do it. Because our women, it's just something about our women. I mean, I mean, is it the way they dress? Is it, you know, the, the type of clothes? What is it? It's just a, the Lord got the spirit of the Lord on them, man. That's right. You feel me? Now, when they're in the right spirit, they're they beautiful. But when they're evil, well, they monsters. That's right. And that's what the white man has created today. Right. This is the result of the feminist movement in America. Right. When you see black women, the Bible says at one time in our nation, our women were so delicate, they didn't put their feet, they, they bare foot on the ground. Right. They were just that delicate. Now I see them stomping the pavement with six inch heels down, down here on Canal Street. That's right. Stomping the pavement, I mean, about to bust the concrete over. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, me all over the, all over the street, uncovered. You can, let me tell you, you can go to Google Earth right now and zoom down on Google Earth and see the crack of her behind right now on the right. street. That's how bad it got. Every woman, like hey. a woman, that's why they say private parts. They private parts because they ain't supposed to be exposed to everybody. Right. But we listen to, listen to the white man and now look, our woman out here being a $2 hoe. Right. right. And our kids walking around rolling up a blunt at 12 years old. Am I right? Am I right? Uh, uh, yeah, does that? 12 years old. We just saw one. Right down here on Bourbon Street. I mean, on Canal Street. 12 years old, out here getting high. Now, for the black women to say something wrong with us, explain that to us. Right. Explain that since you got so much to say about black men talking the truth. Explain why our kids are walking out here with blunts and they mama 12 years old. Right. I want to know. We going to talk about the white man. We going to deal with our problems too. But before you get mad and fix your mouth about the UPK and Commander General Yohana, you better examine what kind of kids we raise. You better examine your household before you say anything about our UPK. Because these brothers back here love black women. We love our kids. And we love our brothers. We love our family, man. You can't argue with that. It's undisputed. Any more on that? That's one. Turn up my car. For they are lively. They are what? For they are lively. Uh -huh. And are delivered. Error. The midwives come in unto them. You see that? Our, our kids are lively, man. 
Our kids are special. Our babies are special, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't see no black kid going shit up no dog on school, man, because he had it, because somebody ain't like his post or somebody ain't tickle him. You don't see that. Right. But these white kids, they can have a, let me tell you something, they can lose in a video game and they gonna kill everybody else. Right. They can, like what, what I think one brother said, like Call of Duty, they can lose in Call of Duty, the video game, and go and shoot everybody up. Right. So they lost the video game. Right. You understand? The whole school they shooting that bitch. Come on, damn right, right, brother. Give me some, brother. Bro, I'm damn on, right. Hold it, bro. I'm damn right, right, man. You understand? I'm the right. whole school. Everybody. Shooting everybody. Now, now how are we gonna how we gonna have a society with that? Ask yourself that question. Can we really have a society when our kids go to school and they shoot them off? No. We can't I can't I can't live like that. Right. Brothers and kids, we can't live like that. We gotta make sure our kids are safe. Otherwise, I mean, anything can happen, you know? It could be another shooting, who knows? Right. You understand? We gotta protect our kids. We gotta protect right. our babies. You understand? The white man, he wants your sympathy when his kids are acting out in school That's and right. killing everybody. But I got a question for you. Before you give your sympathy, before you give your prayers, ask yourself, how did white people treat black kids when it was a drug epidemic? Right. How did they treat our kids who acted out of school? That's right. They told them they were a menace to society. They locked them up. They made a prison to school pipeline or That's school right. to prison pipeline. That's right. And they gave up on our kids and, and threw them in detention. That's right. Kicked them out of school. Right. But when it comes to white kids, you got to have some sense. You got to understand how they feel. You got to understand why he shot up those people. He didn't mean to do it. Even though he shot at, 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 at number 12, he still didn't mean to do it. After he killed the 12th person, he didn't mean to do it. Come on, man. We got to have some real talk in America, man. Some real, all right, brother. Some real discussions, man. With the brother bringing out back his head, right. I'm going to pass it back to him because I, I, it's like he got me fired up back here, man. Because he's bringing it out. You know what I'm saying? And I want white America to understand what we must do to stop this. We must racially profile white people. That's right, man. We're trying to give you a solution. It's not a bulletproof backpack. Right. I people buying bulletproof backpacks? I mean, I wish we could have invested in those. But they buying so much bulletproof backpacks right now. It's ridiculous. They made, whoever invented the bulletproof backpack, whoever owned that company, he making millions of dollars right now. So they, they can't make enough bulletproof backpacks right now for you white folks. Right. You understand? But the solution is to racially profile white people. That's right. That's how we're going to stop the crime in America. Right. With the school shoot. You know what That's I'm saying? Right. I'm going to pass it back over to Officer Malak while I keep dropping. Right. But get it from the hand. Shalom, Israel. It's, it's going, going down. 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 It's that time again. Come join us. At the 49th annual Passover. Shalom, Israel. My name is Officer Nazar of Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. Started on 1 West 125th Street and all of New York under command of Juliana. If you heard the rumors, the rumors are absolutely true, man. You understand? We're going to be having the 49th annual Passover in Yonkers, New York. You understand? Under command of Juliana. Hosted by Commander General Yana of the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. It's going to be on 2nd Hudson Street at the Grand Roosevelt Ballroom. You, might, you most definitely should be there if you're from the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians only. You understand? Make sure you be there, man. If you're in the South, if you're in the Caribbean, if you're in South America, wherever the hell you are on this earth, man, if you Black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, you should be at the Lord's Passover, which is the only Passover authorized on this earth. You understand by the Lord, which is going to take place at Yonkers in Yonkers, New York, at Second Hudson Street. You understand at the Grand, uh, the Grand Roosevelt Ballroom. Make sure you be there, man. You understand? We'll be turned up in there, man. Make sure you be there, man. Come on, March 30th at Sunday. All Israel is invited. Come on, come on, March 30th at Sunday. Come on, come on, March 30th at Sunday. Commanding General Yahana and the IMPK. So you better not miss it. Shalom.